How y'all doing today? Can I get a response? How you guys doing? Y'all alert and aware and pay attention? I won't take up too much of your time because I know, what are you, mostly ninth graders? Right. So ninth graders, uh, <laughs> ninth graders usually are uh, distracted a little bit. I want you guys to try to pay attention to this story though because it's a little bit important and I hope that it inspires you uh, to pursue your dreams. You're not going to be in high school too long. You have probably about, what, four years left, three and a half years left, and time will go by really, really quickly, and then you're in the real world. And it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks, okay? It's going to be hard. So I want to share with you a quote. This quote says, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I got this rock as a gift from my best friend when I was 17. I was a senior in high school. At the time, she was headed off to Yale University. You guys are familiar with Yale, right? Okay, uh, it's a very prestigious university. Uh, she was a 4.0 student, and I was like a 2.5 student. Uh, I was an artist, I did a lot of drawing and photography and creative writing, but I wasn't really into my studies as much as I should have been. I was really preoccupied with doing something that kept my mind busy, and that was my art. But she saw something in me at the time. At 17, she really believed in me. She really believed that I could achieve my goals. But I had problems at home with my mother, so I had some issues at home that distracted me from doing my studies. And when she gave me that rock, at first I thought it was kind of corny because who gives their friends a rock? But I was like, you know, maybe you really mean something. And I kept on looking at those words, and they started to inspire me. Now. 11th grade, 12th grade, right after we graduated, my friend head, headed off to Yale. And I thought that I was going to college, but my mother, who was college educated, uh, did not support me in going to college. So I didn't go to school like everybody else right after high school. I actually ended up homeless and on the street. Uh, I struggled for a long time to figure out my place in the world. And I couldn't believe that I was out here in the world on the street Obviously, I'm not from America, so I didn't know a lot of people, and I was lost. And it's, for a while, I actually thought that I was just going to become a hood rat, and you know, that was my life. But something in me felt like something better had to come, because I always drew pictures, and I always saw myself somewhere else in life. I had dreams, and I just couldn't see myself sitting on the street lost like that. Eventually, somebody took me in off the street. So I didn't stay out there for too long. And I tried to get into college, but that just did not work out because I was like a kid and they wouldn't let me in because I have a parent. And I tried for years and years and years to get into school. And I couldn't do it. By the time I was 19, this is my friend now. She's in her second year at Yale. She's doing really, really well. And I'm sitting here working at a stupid job. I'm talking about getting paid 525 an hour. I'm like, where is my future going? I can't even finish, I can't even finish college. I can't even go to college. And for a while, I really, really, really got depressed, you know? I mean, think about it. You go through high school, you expect that you're gonna go to college, you expect you come out of college, you're gonna go get your what, your master's, get a good job, you know, live a good life. But I was really, really disappointed because my life just didn't turn out like that. And so by the time I was 19, I kind of gave up. You know, I kind of got really, really sad and gave up. I was mad at the world, okay? I'm mad at everybody that came, came around me. I was like a mad black girl, okay? I just had an attitude and everything. You laugh, but I'm serious. You know, there are some kids out here who have a lot of anger in them, and I was one of them. And so by the time I turned 20, and I was still young, I ended up having my first child, okay? Yeah, that's young, woo. That's real young, okay? But when you're dealing with a lot of stuff and you have no support system, you don't have parents who support you, you don't have guidance, you end up making a lot of, a lot of decisions that you shouldn't at a young age, okay? And so I had my child at a young age. And at that point, I was like, well, I definitely ain't going to college now. Life is just a complete mess. You know, this is going to be really difficult. And... Um, it got more difficult at that point. 
So at 20, I'm like, okay, I have this kid. I gotta, you know, I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life. And um, I ended up starting to feel kind of sick. Um, I just didn't know what was going on. Eventually I went to the doctor and I found out that I had a rare, rare, rare disease, a rare illness, it's a kidney disease. And it was lying dormant in my body for years and years and years. And when I got pregnant, it just manifested, and I started to get really, really ill. I'm talking about like, it happened so, so quickly that I didn't even have time to think about what was gonna happen with my life. And I had a young child, and I was trying to get back into school, and at that point I had enrolled into college, and I started school. But quickly, as soon as I started school, after trying all those years to get in, my body started to fall apart, and I got really, really sick. And so sick, that I could barely walk, I could barely walk across campus, I couldn't get to my classes, and eventually the dream of school sort of fell apart again. Okay, it just, it just kept on knocking me down. And it was during the time with my illness that I decided that I was gonna start to draw and paint again, because it was the only thing I could sort of go back to that would help me through the difficulties I was having. Drawing and painting was all I had, and creative writing. Does anybody in here draw? Does anybody in here write? You draw, you write? Does it do something for you? What do you feel like when you're doing it? Does it take you away? You don't feel angry anymore. Right, it sort of like takes your mind off of what's really happening, right? If you do music, say if you sing or something like that, or play the guitar, or play the violin, or whatever, that's the same kind of thing art does for you. It takes your mind off of what's happening. And so when I was really, really sick, I looked at art as a way to take my mind off of my reality, okay? And I kept on dreaming that I was gonna be some big time artist one day. I was gonna make it as an artist. But everybody around me, even though I was sick, told me I sucked. They were like, man, you can't draw. You're never gonna be good. You're never gonna be good? What, you think you're gonna make it as an artist? And I kept on saying, I'm gonna make it. Whether I'm sick or not, I'm gonna get better and I'm gonna make it. I kept on saying it, but I didn't know if it was gonna really happen. And so at some point I ended up on dialysis. Don't know if you know what dialysis is, but when your kidneys fail, you do? You know what it is? Okay, when your kidneys fail, you end up on a machine three times a week that sort of cleans your body, cleans your blood, so you can function as a normal person. And so that's what I ended up doing. And it really, really drugged me down a lot. And at that time, I started drawing even more. I put up a website, and I really, really focused on following my dreams to become an artist at that point. Um, I ended up getting a kidney transplant in 2001 from a brother of mine that I did not know. He was somebody that lived in Jamaica, and it was literally a miracle. I met him one time, and he offered his kidney to me, and it was a perfect match. And he gave me a transplant. And the same year I got that transplant, I did my first art exhibition, okay? And the art exhibition at the time, the work was really, really poor. But after that, the work started getting better and better and better. And so the focus that I came here for is to tell you guys that no matter what your dream is, no matter how silly it appears to be, no matter how far-fetched it appears to be, it can be accomplished. But the reality is it takes a lot of hard work. And sometimes you're gonna get knocked down on your behind. There's gonna be people who tell you that you can't accomplish, you can't do it, you just can't do it. You're not good enough, you're not cute enough, your voice don't sound good enough, you can't be no singer. Please don't try it, cause you really ain't good. You know, people are gonna tell you that all the time. And then you can actually show them, show and prove basically through hard work, okay? I had a guy tell me one time when he saw my art, he was like, your work is just garbage. I don't know why you're even trying to be an artist. And he had, there was a, and I'm dead serious. And there was a painting on the wall, okay? And he was like, now that right there, that's real art, okay? And life comes full circle sometimes. 10 years later, I saw this same dude at an art show in Philly, and he was selling jewelry. And he was like, what you doing up here? And I was like, oh, I'm selling my art. And he was like, oh, where you at? I showed him where I was. And I was like, oh, by the way, that same artist you compared me to, 
That's the one I'm here with in Philly. That same artist he told me it was better than me was the one who saw my work and supported me, and I was there at the same art show with him. Life comes full circle. Do not give up on your dreams, ever. And don't, don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't achieve anything, okay? But you really have to be dedicated to what you're doing. So this is called The Beautiful Struggle. This is a picture that a friend of mine did of me. It's actually like, almost like graphic design or whatever. And I call my life The Beautiful Struggle because it's not easy being an artist, okay? It's taken me 10 years to get where I am. But right now, I'm an international artist. My work has been featured in the New York Times and Upscale Magazine. I've been in all kinds of international newspapers. I've done a lot of work throughout the United States and abroad with my art. People have collected from celebrities have collected my artwork, okay? Who would have thought that that same kid who was homeless at 17, people knocking her down, telling her what she couldn't do, would be here doing what she really wants to do right now, okay? So don't ever give up on what you want to do with your life. And here I'm gonna show you a couple of pieces of my art. This is, a, this is a pastel piece. Are you guys familiar with pastel? Anybody who draws? No? It's like, it's like pigment, it's like raw pigment. This piece is called Golden. So my art really is about uplifting people. So a lot of the work looks sort of like African and European at the same time, okay? The next piece, this is called Queen's Nectar, okay? All of the women wear crowns on their head to represent royalty, African-American black royalty, that innately we all are we're royal and strong, and that's what my work represents. The birds in the pieces also represent my, my survival, my survival from illness. That's what the birds represent. And the next piece, that's another piece. I do a lot of portrait-like paintings, okay? And this is called of royal lineage. This is all fabric on the pieces as well, okay? And this last piece is a very strong pastel piece, okay? So if anybody draws, just keep up, keep doing what you're doing. If you, if you sing, keep doing what you're doing. I want to show you guys one original piece of mine, okay? So you can take a look at what it looks like in its original form. And then I have a gift for all of you before you leave. And no, it's not a piece of art. So this is an original piece of mine. Okay? And this is all fabric. And I don't know if you're familiar with gold leaf. You might not remember me tomorrow, okay? You might not remember me a week from now. But just remember to, to focus on your dreams. That's all that matters, is to not give up on what you're trying to do with your life. As long as you're not trying to do anything to harm anybody, go to college, get your degree, be passionate about what you do, if you're failing or you're having a difficult time, just don't give up, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys your own rock. Don't hit nobody in the head with the rock, okay? Just keep the rock, put it in your pocket, put it on your dresser, put it somewhere to remember to follow your dreams, okay? Don't throw the rock around. This is your rock, your dream rock, okay? All right, it was nice talking to you guys and thank you so much for having me, all right? Oh my God, I didn't know that.